Greetings people, this is Paul here at Green Shore Homestead. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about saving seed, uh, another very, very important thing that we do in the garden. <clears throat> and uh, a lot of things are obvious, uh, you know, as far as seed goes, like you got your, your cantaloupe, uh, your watermelon, uh, squash, things like this, peppers, when you, when you cut into them, you know, the seeds are right there, they're easy to see and easy to get out of the fruit. And uh, you don't really need to do much with them to, to save them. You, you do need to rinse them off. Um, I use a wire basket, a screen basket. I'm going to show you that when we get in the house. Um, and uh, but there's there's some seed that could could throw you off a little bit, and and you might not realize you know what you're even looking at. So I'm going to talk about some of that today. And like harvesting seed out of the tomato. Everybody knows what a tomato seed looks like inside a tomato. We've all cut into a tomato and seen that, but it's got that pulp around it. And so, you know, sometimes little little curveballs can be thrown at you that you're and you're not really sure what to do with them. So I'm going to show you how to widen your stance and crowd the plate and uh, gather some of this uh, seed that you know may throw you off a little bit. This right here, that all this brown looking weed. This is actually lettuce, okay? And I've got some fall lettuce that I've started over here that is the exact same thing. It's a, it's a red leaf lettuce. I've got some growing over there, and this is what it looks like when it goes to seed. Uh, most people that walked into this garden would probably think this is some kind of a, a, um, uh, a weed, like I said. But it's got all these little white uh, flowers on it, little white fluff sticking up. And uh, those used to be yellow. They're now white. The seed is completely dry. It's actually been dry for some time because I've already harvested some and started my, my fall lettuce. But um, what you do here is um, when this is called bolting, when the lettuce sends up a flower stalk that's called bolting and this lettuce is bolted. So I'm going to grab a, a couple of these seed heads here and bring them over to the camera and show you what, uh, just, just these white fluff balls right here. Just going to grab a couple of those, bring them to the camera here, and I'm going to show you what these look like. Okay. So I've got those, those little white fluff balls here. I'm going to break those up with my fingers and get the chaff out of the way. These uh, charcoal looking things right here, charcoal colored little guys, those are the uh, that's the uh, lettuce seed. Okay, and again all I did, just uh, grab a seed head. Blow it in your fingers, break it up. There's a bunch more right there. So it, it takes a little while to harvest lettuce seed just because it's so small and you gotta you know walk around and pull all these little seed heads. But you know I've got probably some, you know, some 20 seeds right there um, from picking three three seed heads. There's no way I would go through here and harvest all of these. But um, you know I spend 20 minutes here. I'm gonna have a lot of seed. So um, there's another type of lettuce that I grow. And the seed head is completely different than this one is. So I'm going to go show that to you. I'm also going to show you the uh, what this looked like when it was actually growing as lettuce. So we'll go over there and I'll, I'll give you a look at that. So this red leaf lettuce right here, that is uh, the same thing that I've just gathered the seed from. This is just young lettuce that's growing and eventually it's going to bolt and uh, go to seed just like that other did. But it's going to take a you know, month and a half, two months. It, this will probably actually be killed by the frost because uh, we're into September now um, before this uh, this bolts. So I've already gathered all my lettuce seed for the year, so um, we're good to go. We're just going to eat this here until it, the frost kills it. Now what we have here is another type of lettuce, and this lettuce you you've got the yellow flowers on it, just like we did on the other one, but. The seed heads don't form at the base of the flowers like they did on that other lettuce. This particular lettuce here um, develops seed pods that grow along the stem of the, the, the plant. So we've got all these seed pods here. I'm going to pick a couple so I can show them to you. And then uh, what we do is we roll these seed pods in our fingers and uh, thereby um, gather the, the, the seed from the seed pods. And uh, so I'll show you this here. Just roll those in your uh, fingers, these seed pods like this, and uh, you can see the little seeds in there. I'll get these pods out of the way, and uh, all those little bitty flecks right there, 
those little bitty guys, that's the uh, seed for this particular lettuce. You know, um, that's, you know, they're both lettuces, but they, they produce their seed in very different ways. And, uh, you know, there's several seed pods here. I'm going to be coming back out and harvesting some more uh, lettuce, uh, seed from this particular lettuce. But um, you need to get to know the plants that you're growing so that when they go to seed, uh, you can recognize what you're looking at. You know, I, I just w was out here and I was looking at my lettuce. I knew it had gone to seed and I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm like, where are the, where are the seed? Oh, and I realized, okay, this one developed seed pods rather than the seed heads underneath the flowers. So you just, you need to be, become comfortable with the plants that you're going to grow and, uh, you know, it'll, you, you'll eventually learn where to look for the seed and then how to harvest the seed from those particular things. Now, with your, like I said, with your peppers, your melons, your squash, those seeds are very obvious, um, but you, you still need to rinse. There's a film that's going to be on there, and you need to rinse that film off because um, if you don't rinse that film off and leave, let the seed dry really, really well, uh, it can rot while it's in the seed packet. So. Uh, you want to clean the seed off, let it dry at least for a full day. I usually let it go for a day or two and then uh, we'll package it up. And I'll show you how I make my own seed packets and uh, tell you why I do what I do uh, to, to help preserve the seed. So um, I've got a tomato and we're going to run in the house and I'm going to show you how to um, harvest the seed uh, that has pulp on it. And we'll. Uh, show you how to package them up. Okay, we're here on the canning station down in the basement and um, I'm pretty sure I've showed, showed you how to, what we're dealing with with the biennials such as carrots and uh, onions, beets, these sort of things. Um, and I, I think I shot a video on that, but while I'm doing a seed video, I thought just in case I didn't, I'm pretty sure I did, but this, this is a carrot flower and uh, it's got all the seeds on it right now. It's obviously fully dry. It's all brown and crunchy. Um, and in the spring and summer, this is gonna look like Queen Anne's lace. This is gonna be a white flower and it's gonna be about that big around. And when those flower petals die back, um, that's when we get this. So um, the seeds are just on here where the flower petals were. And uh, just like that lettuce seed was, we're gonna kind of run that through our fingers and get all that uh, seed off of this uh, flower head and uh, <clears throat> bring the camera over and let you see what these uh, carrot seeds look like. You get a lot of carrots. That, that was just one little flower and we've got quite a few seeds here. I'll show you those. Um, those are all the little carrot seeds there. Get some on my finger. And uh, so you can see those. And uh, then the onion is going to be the same way. The onions are um, all the little seeds, they're little black seeds inside these individual little um, uh, flower heads. And the seeds are the little black guys there. Um, so normally what I would do is turn this seed head upside down inside a paper bag and then shake it violently and then all the seed heads would pop out of their, these uh, flower heads. And, uh, but the, the, the black specks, um, those are the uh, carrot seeds. I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, onion seeds. There's some right there. There's three of them right there. So that's what you would plant then in the spring to grow your, your onions. So now I'm going to talk about, I'm going to clean that up. Give me a minute here, I'll get that cleaned up. And then I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, tomatoes and uh, things with the pulp on the seed. Uh, that's going to kind of throw you a curveball. Okay, so we've got a tomato here. And we're just going to cut it in half so we can get at the seed. And I know you all know what tomato seeds look like and where they're at in the tomato. We're just going to stick our finger in there and just kind of get that pulp and pull those tomato seeds out with that pulp. And uh, people do these, you know, they, they save their seed from tomato in different ways. And um, I've done it a lot of different ways over the years. and um, Quite frankly, this is just about the easiest way to do it. Um, few, fewest amount of steps, and, and it's pretty darn easy. So once you get your uh, seed out of the tomato, um, just put it in this wire basket or one similar to it. And then we're going to um, not 
turn the water on real hard because we don't want to waste a lot of water here on the homestead. But uh, you got the seed in the bottom of this wire basket and you're just going to rub your fingers on that tomato seed to rub the seed on the pulp, the, you know, on the, on the wire so the pulp comes off. And uh, kind of get all your seed in one little spot there and give it a look over and I can see that the pulp is, is gone. And now, newspaper is the paper that you want to put this on. You don't, sorry, you do not want to put this, uh, these wet seeds on like a dish towel or a paper towel or anything like that. You're going to want to put it on, on newspaper. Newspaper works best. Uh, the black and white print works a little better. This is colored print, but I don't have any colored print right now. I don't get the newspaper, so I go uh, when we recycle our, our, you know, our stuff at the you know cardboard and glass and plastic and some such. Um, I, I look. I go into the uh, recycling area and I I'll, I'll just grab like one little bundle of uh, newspaper when I know I'm going to be gathering seed and drying the seed on the newspaper. Um, so you, you know, you saw me. I, I banged all the seed out of the, the wire basket, and now it's sitting on the newspaper. So um, we want to separate the seed, move them around a little bit with our finger. You don't want the seed touching it's any other seed. You want them all individual because if they're touching while they're drying, when they dry, they're going to be stuck together, and the only way you're going to get them apart is you got to rip them apart, and then you're going to do damage to at least one, if not both, of those seeds. So make sure that they're not touching each other, and if there's any, any residual pulp still stuck on them, you want to kind of drag them around and knock that off with your finger. When it comes to um, cucumbers, they're about the worst thing uh, for gathering seed from because the, the pulp really sticks to those seeds. And you're, after you, you know, when you go to separate the seeds like this, you really kind of have to drag them around and mash at them to get the, the pulp off of them. It's important that there's no pulp on them when you go to save them because that just harbors bacteria and things that will cause the seed to rot. So um, these are all separated real well. All the pulp comes off the tomato seed really easily. As you saw, it didn't take 30 seconds for me to get those cleaned up and mashed down on this paper, and then uh, took a little longer for me to get them all separated. But um, and if I was actually going to be saving the seed from this tomato, I would have gathered a lot more than that. So it taken a little longer. But um, doesn't it's not a big deal. It's very simple. And um, that works for any seed that has the pulp on it. And if, if the seed doesn't have the pulp on it, we're going to use cantaloupe as an example. There's no pulp on the cantaloupe seed or the pepper seed. You still want to put it in this wire basket, run it under the water, and rub it with your fingers. You don't have to rub it hard, just a little bit, just to get any of that, that film that would be on this, the uh, seed that would, like I said, harbor bacteria or anything like that. So once you've rinsed them out, just put them on the paper and let them sit on the paper. Like I said, I'll, I'll let them sit for at least a day, probably two, and then I'm going um, to bag them up. Now I'm going to show you here how I actually do the bagging. I make, make my own seed packets, and then uh, when I put the seed in there, I store it in the refrigerator. So we're going to go on to that step here now. So to bag them up, I'm just going to take a, a quarter piece of uh, standard piece of paper, and I'm going to try fold that and then I'm going to fold the bottom over. So we've got it folded in half so that they overlap in the middle and then I folded the bottom under and then uh, take a piece of tape, put it there to hold the bottom, take another piece, put it there to hold the middle and you got yourself a nice little seed packet. And then, you know, I, I go another step and I write, you know, Greenshire heirloom seed on there. Um, now there is another thing I need to talk to you about, and that's cross-pollination. Well, on the topic of the, the seed packets, um, it, it is best to use paper. That's why the seed companies ship their seeds in, in paper, because uh, you don't want to use plastic bags or, or things that are airtight like that, because you, you want those seeds to be able to breathe, for lack of a better word, but um, you, you, you do want them to have some form of air circulation but you, you want to keep them in a controlled environment and in a cool environment is best. So um, you don't want them to be exposed to high humidity because that'll get the seeds potentially damp and also you know help mil um, mold, mildew, or bacteria and that sort of thing to build up. So you want to keep these 
you, you want them to be stone dry when you save them, and then you want to keep them stone dry. So um, that's why I store mine in the in the refrigerator because it's cool and it's dry and it's always the same temperature. You don't want them to go through a wide fluctuation of temperatures, such as you know would be if you kept them you know in the basement or or something like that. You want to keep them pretty pretty stable in, in that both temperature and humidity level. Um, and then, you know, I just have a box. I put them in and I stick the box in the fridge down in the basement. That way it's not in our way. Now, <clears throat> on the subject of cross-pollination, uh, that, that can be a problem, especially for your, your vine crops like uh, watermelon, cantaloupe, cucumbers, squash, pumpkins, that sort of thing. And um, the way I get around that, because I don't... You know, distance will, will help with that. If, if you're, if you're going to plant pumpkins and cantaloupe and you can separate those by, say, 300 feet, you're probably going to be okay because, you know, as the bees come in to pollinate the, you know, they get in the flower of the, the uh, pumpkin, uh, they're, they're going to be buzzing all over that and then they're going to return to the hive and deposit that pollen and then maybe they'll, they'll be in your cucumbers at, or, or your cantaloupe sometime. Uh, later that day or something, but it, you know you you need to have a large area in which you're you're spreading these things out, and and potent and, and hopefully then planting other things in between them, uh, so that you know the bee wouldn't go directly from the pumpkin and fly the 200 feet over to the cantaloupe. You want to have other things in between those plants so that it'll it'll attract the bee and keep him busy, and you know he won't go straight from one to the other. Now. <clears throat> You know, those are your, your bigger flowered, like, like I said, you know, the vine crops more or less. So here I have a cantaloupe and a cucumber. Both are vine crops. Both have pretty good sized flowers and, and they will cross pollinate. But, uh, you know, here I've listed, you know, it's, I've got Greenshire heirloom seed and then uh, it's a cucumber. But then here I've got the Latin name, which is Cucumus uh, sativus. Okay, and same thing here. This is the cantaloupe. It's Wisconsin Pride is the name of the cantaloupe, and it's also a cucumis, but it's cucumis mellow. Okay, so it's the second word in the Latin name that, that's the important one, because this being a sativus and this being a mellow, uh, the chances of them cross-pollinating are very, very slim. It can happen, but um, then, you know, as long as I don't plant them right next to each other and I've got other things going on in between those two plants, I should be okay. And uh, so far, I have been. I've only had uh, something cross-pollinate one time, and it, it, it just made an absolute mess out of it. I mean, it doesn't ma matter if it cross-pollinates that first season. You're still going to have your cantaloupe and your cucumber. But when you harvest seed from that cantaloupe and that cucumber, if it's cross-pollinated, it's going to ruin the crop for next year. You're going to have cantaloupe that's got the flavor of cucumber in it, and that's just horrible. And that is actually what happened to me. Um, so, yeah, it was terrible. And fortunately, I had gathered seed a few years before that too, so I, I still had my I still had seed I could plant that hadn't been um, contaminated. But that the seed I gathered from that one particular year, I had to destroy it. So um, another example would be uh, your butternut squash. Now your butternut squash, I don't remember the first name in the uh, Latin name, but the second name would be Mashta. So I would have I would have Sativus, Mello, and Mashta. So those, those three, the chances of them cross-pollinating are, are very slim. And I, I've got some others, and I've got five or six different um, uh, second words in the Latin name. So um, my, my seed should be okay. If pipo would be another one, most of your pumpkin seed is going to be a pipo. And so um, as long as I didn't have five or six pipos or five or six mellows or five or six sativias, uh, I... I should be okay as long as you've got one of each. You're, you know, that's going to drastically limit the, the amount of cross pollinization you're going to have. So, um, other than that, I think that pretty well covers the basics of, of harvesting seed and what you know what to look for in your garden, uh, what to be careful with on on the cross pollinization, and then uh, how to clean seed and and then make your own seed packets if you choose to do that, and uh, and then. Um, how to dry the seed and then store it. So this is Paul Greenshire Homestead. I thank you for watching. If this video helped you out at all, I'd appreciate it if you give me a click on the like button and subscribe. You have a great day and we'll talk to you next time.